George Galloway is going to be sworn into Parliament today. Or is he the new MP for Gaza? It's so difficult to tell these days. This after Rishi Sunak targeted both Islamist and, for some reason, far-right extremists on Friday, saying that democracy is under threat. This comes as hate preachers will be blocked from entering the UK as the terror threat level, we're told, reaches its highest since 9-11. But I thought hate preachers were already not allowed in the country. Let's talk about all of this and plenty more besides with author and journalist Douglas Murray, who joins me right now. Uh, good afternoon to you, Douglas. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Um, I mean, you know, we're only talking about Islamist extremism now after the rise of what we're seeing on our streets. Oh, sorry. oh don't forget also far-right extremism, because Rishi seems just as concerned about that, does he not? Even though I've not really seen that being a particular issue on our streets every other Saturday or indeed with, uh, uh, you know, uh, what, what is going on in terms of threats to Parliament. But there we are. Uh, no, that's, that's up to him. Um, but this all comes, of course, after... Uh, Ga George Galloway was elected as the new MP for Rochdale, but then immediately said this was for Gaza. All goes back to what my last guest went through, Noah, uh, at, uh, on October the 7th. Um, how did we get here, Douglas? Well, it's, it's several things, uh, Julia, as you know. I mean, the, the first is obviously, and in the case of a, of a parliamentary seat like Rochdale, uh, it's a result of um, mass migration for many years and a total failure uh, to integrate populations. As I've said repeatedly uh, for a very long time now, if you import the world's people, you also import the world's problems. And, you know, there's a reason why it wasn't just Galloway, but uh, um, the, the, the Labour candidate uh, um, for Rochdale, of course, had to, had to pull out or was, was dumped eventually by the Labour Party for making anti-Semitic comments. Uh, it's no coincidence. Uh, it, it, it isn't a coincidence that there was a sort of cluster of people who pandered to the certain bigotries in that seat. It's that that's what a significant number of people in that voting district want. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Galloway is, is, is an opportunist, of course, um, but he was giving the local electorate or part of the local electorate uh, what they want. Yeah. If you were an a, ordinary citizen who cared about, you know, unemployment, poverty, opportunity and much more in that area, uh, you, you didn't really get a say. You didn't get anyone to vote for uh, in this election. And, and it was and interesting, the leaflets. Yeah, the leaflets that were put out, there were two very different whiteboards, got, you know, it's all about the, I know what a woman is, Rochdale grooming gangs, the local maternity hospital, but it was the Muslims, it's all about Gaza. And he said, he said in his, his speech, you know, this was, this was a win for Gaza, and this is a city, or sort of town yeah. that has huge problems, I mean, huge issues yeah. of, of, you know, poverty oh. and deprivation and desperately needs an awful lot to be dealt with. And I'm well, not entirely sure that they should be concerning themselves almost entirely with what's going on in Gaza. I mean, that's their choice, no, but, I mean, but it's not going to necessarily it's, help it's those all, people. It's all connected, though, Julia. I mean, uh, Rochdale, as most people watching will know, uh, is the scene of one of the most appalling uh, rape gang scandals in modern Britain. And uh, there's an interesting conundrum that, it, that throws itself up here, which is uh, what happens if uh, you are a voter in Rochdale who has uh, seen uh, this happen in your neighborhood, who knows it happening, who probably knows of victims, and uh, you'd like to get your voice heard. Well, well, well here are the options. Uh, you can uh, make your voice heard in the way that most of us can in democracy, which is to speak up, uh, make your voice heard by, you know, going out on the streets or attending a demonstration or something. But no, 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 no. If you did that, you would be decried as a member of the far right immediately um, because you're not allowed to have a, a voice on matters like that if you happen to be. Uh, a particularly white and working class, let alone a white working class male, which it seems is 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 the least um, pleasant thing to be in the eyes of much of the commentary out in the UK. You're not meant to have a voice. But let's say instead of turning out on the streets or making your voice heard in opposition to rape gangs, then you waited patiently to exercise your vote in the democratic process. Well, well then you have um, a bunch of people uh, ranting about the Jews and uh, friends of Saddam Hussein and Bashar al-Assad uh, uh, all showing up and again pandering to the local Muslim vote 
And you don't really have a say then either. Yeah. So when Rishi Sunak and others uh, play this game of, oh, it's about Islamists, but also the far right. Yeah, there are some, some far right people in the UK and they are completely on the fringes and they're disliked by everybody and they don't have any place in our democracy. They, they're not in Parliament. They don't get voted into Parliament. Rishi Sunak had to summon up the spectre of the former head of the British National Party, Nick Griffin, who's had absolutely no presence in public life for 13 or 14 years now, had to summon up hit him up like a ghoul, uh, as an example of the far right. But the, I go back to this point. What if you're just a concerned voter in Rochdale yeah. who has seen the Muslim rape gangs in your area, who has seen all of the equivocation of the political class and has seen everybody who's spoken up about it decried as far right. You know, where exactly are you allowed a voice on this? Yes, where? exactly. And that's the thing. And again, I think lots of people watching that speech that Richie Snack made were sort of quite shocked by, again, these sort of, on the one hand, far right, on the one hand, Islamist extremism, when I'm not aware of the far right playing a role in our democ democratic procedures being oh. changed a couple of weeks ago as a result of the far right. The threats to MPs right now are coming from Islamist extremism, not from the far right. A teacher forced into hiding for you know, th over three years in Batley, not from the far right. A, a, a cinema chain not showing uh, a film about uh, the Prophet Muhammad's family, not from the far right. I, London Bridge attack, both of them, Westminster Bridge. I mean, you know, uh, Manchester Arena. I keep going like, yes, Joe Cox, awful, horrible, terrible murder. But really, is that all they've got? I mean, that's all they've got. And, and, and yet we're going to say these things are equivalent when quite clearly they aren't. It, it, the, the British government has played this very cynical game for many years now. Um, uh, and, and again, I come back to this point. If 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 it, if there had been a far right crowd, an actually far right crowd, let's say of British National Party to again summon up that long dead spectre of the past, um, if there had been a British National Party demonstration outside the House of Commons the other week, you know, it's not like you or I or anyone else we know would have any problem condemning that either. It's like it's very simple. We wouldn't want and we don't like thugs of any kind intimidating our representatives, let alone um, threatening them. We find that perfectly easy. And if there was such a group, you and I and others wouldn't have a problem with saying we condemn this. We wouldn't have to yeah. summon up other groups to sort of allow us to condemn it. Uh, we just condemn it. Well, OK, so why... So what is well, why are the they so afraid? Here? Why are they so afraid of doing this? Because it seems to me we often hear, and again, even in Rishi Sunak's speech again, there's a lot of talk about, you know, diversity and, you know, and multi... He did, it's interesting, he did keep saying multi-ethnic rather than um, multicultural, which or multi, you know, multiracial rather than multicultural, which I thought was very interesting because for years we've been told by politicians that multiculturalism is good. Diversity of itself, on its own, is a good thing. And a lot of people like me and you, uh, rather more uh, um, beautiful prose in your books, Douglas, have made the point that actually multiculturalism isn't necessarily a good thing. Multi-ethnicity, multiracial, absolutely fine, no issue there. Um, but culture is something that should be what a country defines itself by. And we, we, we like our culture, being liberal about people, people having equal rights, of whether they're white or black or women or men or gay or straight, and being able to marry someone of their faith of their choice, being able to have a religious view and, and leave that religion if they so choose without facing a death threat. Really basic stuff like that. But multiculturalism doesn't necessarily mean that, does it? No, it doesn't. But I mean, this is just so... Uh, all of this is just so past its sell-by date. Um, I mean, it's 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 almost 15 years now since Prime Minister Sarkozy, Angela Merkel and David Cameron all said that multiculturalism had failed. Um, and so th this is an old argument. This, th this argument has been effectively won, uh, uh, i.e. lost, um, years ago. And here we still are in the UK rabbiting on about it. Yeah. And uh, why? The fact is, is that some diversity is good for a society, but there must be some point at which it no longer is. And I would say that the point at which it no longer is, is where you have communities of people who uh, hold on to the prejudices that they brought from their country of origin 
and then start to push it into our own political system. Worst of all is when that happens in a threatening manner, as it does with sections of the Muslim communities in this country, where effectively MPs from, and the Speaker and the Prime Minister and everyone else are intimidated yeah. from identifying the problem. You know, I'm so fed up of hearing people saying things that, you know, would have been fine 20 years ago, but are just way out of date now. The question now is, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? And Rishi Sunak's answer is, uh, well, we have record high migration, um, but we'll talk about what a great liberal country we are. No, that just doesn't do it. it the, a lot of people don't want to integrate in Britain, and we should have realised that by now. They don't want to be part of Britain. And what's more, when Rishi Sunak and others talk about uh, this country, they very often talk about it as if it's just, you know, our liberalism, our political liberalism is the one thing that we have going for us, in our, or, or that our diversity is actually our essence as a country. And that's just not true. Uh, Britain was not very diverse until about 60 years ago and was certainly nothing like what it is now uh, um, until the last few decades, principally since the Labour election of 1997. Um, but, the, you know, this is a country, Great Britain, with an extraordinarily long and rich history, all of which we now push aside, all of which we ignore, and we sell ourselves simply as this uber-liberal sort of landing spot for the world. And I don't think that passes master. No. It certainly and, and it's British also, looking. it's not something the British public asked for or consented to, oh. and when asked repeatedly, say, no, thank you very much. And again, that doesn't make someone racist or bigoted or, or xenophobic. It's about wanting to protect the very thing that supposedly what attracts people uh, to this country. And again, the need, as Sweden and Germany and other countries have discovered, the need to be intolerant of intolerance and stop tolerating that. Can I ask you, just find in terms of George Galloway, which seemed to be what prompted the Prime Minister to make this speech on, on Friday, even though, of course, when Suella Bradman and Lee Anderson speak about very similar things, apparently it's totally beyond the pale and they really can't be, you know, in the government or part of the Conservative Party anymore because they're clumsy language. Um, but it seems to me that the British people don't deserve George Galloway. But it seems to me that the British political class do and that they created him... They have created his success. They are responsible for it. And they're the ones who are going to have to do something about it. Do you agree? Well, they just, they, oh, they're all, uh, I mean, Labour, Conservative, they're all totally incapable of speaking to the public. Uh, they're incapable of speaking to our concerns. Um, Rishi Sunak's speech was a good example. Any speech by any Labour MP is a very good example. Look at Jess Phillips last week um, um, talking about how wonderful uh, Birmingham is and how there are no problems in her area and how the marches and the, pal the, the Palestinian protesters weren't any problem. You know, uh, she should look, by the way, to her constituency. She should look to Birmingham and the hate preachers preaching anti-Semitism in the mosques in Birmingham, which there's plenty of video of and she could find it if she was curious yeah. about it. But because all of these parties have ducked all these issues. Of course, they leave they leave it open, and they also pander to it. As I say, there's a reason why the Labour Party selected and then deselected somebody who was pandering to anti-Semitism. Yep. It was because he was pandering to a voter base in Rochdale that wants anti-Semites and wants to vote for them. Um, if if the best that Rishi Sunak and Keir Starmer and co can do in response to that is to start talking about fundamental British values, then I'm sorry, we've lost already. It has to be said one other thing quickly, if I may. Very George quickly, Galloway yeah. is a great political opportunist. I just hope that all the Muslims who voted for him are pleased that they voted for somebody who said the most slathering and slavish things about Saddam Hussein and Bashar al-Assad, two men who've killed more Muslims in recent decades than anyone else in the world. So those Muslim voters in Rochdale can feel proud of themselves. That's yeah, they're really good Muslims. They're great brothers, great Umar. Yeah, Douglas good work, Murray. guys. Always good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed. Sam Armstrong, quick word from you. Ten years ago, Douglas warned that Europe yep. was literally dying. He said it was a strange death, that our leaders were committing suicide. I cannot hold that view any more strongly now. They hate us, they hate our values, they hate what we stand for. They've replaced it with this banal, dangerous, multicultural nonsense. Yeah.